All right. Thank you so much, everybody, for everybody for being here. So this is episode two, and this is about not being a monolith. So not being a monolith, we're going to talk about um, uh, what, uh, excuse me, we're going to talk about overgeneralizations and the uh, effects uh, of and the harmfulness of overgeneralizations. We're going to talk about what is a monolith, what the heck is that? Um, and uh, yeah, so we're just going to hop straight into season two of our, uh, or excuse, excuse me, episode, hold on. <laughs> season four we're going mm -hmm. to hop right into our season four episode two <laughs> about not being a monolith there we go i can speak english this is the thing that I know. <laughs> so how this episode is going to work is that first of all i have my lovely co-host jamie put in the applause meter jamie smith <laughs> I love it. I eat it up. I told you. <laughs> She's like, stop. stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> and then we have our lovely people joining us today. And how the episode is going to work is that the first time that you speak, just say your name, um, a little bit about you, maybe why you decided to be a part of this either season or this episode specifically. Um, and then today's fun question is, what is your favorite word? <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, hmm. One of my favorite words is Twitter-pated. Twitter-pated. Says the love coach. All right. Um, ja Jamie, anything that you want to add in before we open up the conversation? Oh, you know, I'm super excited for this conversation. I think it's going to be really enlightening and it's going to be a great segue into um, later on in the, in the, in the season where we start talking about microaggressions. Um, but uh, I just have to share my favorite word is behoove. As in, like, it would behoove you to listen to me. So, <laughs> so mm -hmm. okay. I use that at work a lot. So I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right. So with that, um, so my, uh, what I would like to do first is just talk about, okay, what is a monolith mm -hmm. and then go into, you know, why that is, um, harmful and how it affects you, um, personally. Yeah. And so I looked up the like actual <laughs> definition. I did. I a hundred percent. I did too. No, that's why I'm laughing. I, know, I, I was like, I was like, I was like, I was like what? That's, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Literally right before I hopped on this call, I was like, what's a monolith again? <laughs> yeah. Low key, like, what is it? <laughs> That's my fault. I did it. <laughs> blame, blame Jamie. Well, that's, that's, yeah, honestly, that's one of the reasons why I had the, had the uh, fun question of the day be what's your favorite word? Cause most of the time when I'm like, you know, when the word monolith gets brought up, it's like, what the hell is that anyway? Okay. Right. So <laughs> monolith is a large and impersonal political corporate or social structure regarded as intractably indivisible and uniform. So that's where you get the, the phrases of like all black do this you know all asian people are like this all women are da, 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 da. all gay people all you know all of those blanket statements mm -hmm. um and the blanket statements that not only are um just like the the stereotypes but also just like those intrinsic like these things are inseparable right like some people are like all black men are criminals Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's like for them, like that is inseparable. It's like black men criminal. Mm -hmm. um, and so things like so it can be everything from just like, you know, um, all gay people are fabulous um, mm -hmm. uh, to like <laughs> to like the whole the whole spectrum. Right. But it's just like those over generalizations that not only are just like stereotypes that people recognize, but they're stereotypes that people have as inseparable from that thing or person or group. Mm -hmm. 
Cool. And and that's that's absolutely what you know what 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 I thought I was coming into when we were talking about this, um, because a lot of times you know it's not it's not so much that they that that it's what you have the stereotype piece which we probably know and and not love but you know we're familiar with, but then you know for people who step outside of the paradigm you know so if you happen to be a black person who is successful you know it is it is it is seen as being despite. The blackness as opposed to you know as opposed to the blackness contributing to it or you know if you are an asian woman who is very you know who is, who is very um who is very outspoken like wow you must not really be asian because you are like this you know it's like you, it's, it's a it's a narrowing of the identity you know imposed externally you know so that you can't be a different person than what you claim what you appear to be you know in other in, in society's eyes so that's what we want to talk about today like how are you different? How does that make it? How are you different within your identity? You know, what are the things, how does that impact your day-to-day life? And then what are the things that you wish people would know about, you know, the specific flavor of LGBTQ you are, the specific flavor of Black or Asian or Latino that you are, you know, that sort of thing. What do you wish people knew? Well, when you just talk about that, like, oh, first of all, my name is V. I'm a herbalist self-care person i just launched my patreon if you follow me on instagram i launched a patreon and also like told people about this workshop that i've been putting together which for me just being able to put it out there and tell people i'm like i did it <laughs> nothing becomes of it i at least did that <laughs> yeah. that's awesome um so yeah that's really exciting um uh, my favorite word and i knew instantly it, my favorite word is murmur okay i love murmur. it i murmur. just think that's the funniest word <laughs> murmur 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 <laughs> it's the way you say it isn't it no it's like 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 heart murmur or like <laughs> murmur <laughs> okay that and then you said that and now i'm like is that my favorite word <laughs> <laughs> i just wasn't sure if that's what you were saying like i was like is she it what <laughs> <laughs> you're right you're absolutely right <laughs> it's a good word it's a good word it's a yeah. good word and it's a good word because murmur also like sounds like the definition of it totally. it's like, yeah. murmur is a murmur it's right. a murmur yeah. <laughs> 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 uh yeah I, uh, but what I was going to say was uh, that brought up for me and that when people see me, <laughs> they just automatically see, um, like breasts and they're right. like woman. <laughs> right. Oh, you're a woman. Right. That must mean you're a lesbian. And I'm like, that is not what I identify as. <laughs> and it's, it's not even that it's like, hurt like it it hurts me like physic physically well emotionally um it's just hard it it just gets on it's uncomfortable and then you're like oh it's just an uncomfortable situation and you're like wow i wish people wouldn't just like (laughs) shove me into that that box (laughs) you just see breasts and you're like woman lesbian (laughs) (laughs) exactly exactly um, I, I'll go. Um, my name is Ra, and uh, my favorite. I identify as a. I identify as a lesbian, but I guess I also say gay. Mm-hmm. Um, I just. I'm. I, I'm not with men, and so. <laughs> and so basically, <laughs> I have to be like, okay, I like girls, and so. Um, my favorite word. Um, I guess it's hard. I, ha- I probably have a bunch, but. It, the one that came to my head right before you said behoove is okay. hence. hence. Cause like, I'll just be like, you know, like making a point and then I'm just like, hence thus, therefore <laughs> that's why Jasmine is, you know, hands down the best princess of all time. Blah, blah, blah. Right. Like, you know, <laughs> also Jasmine just came to my hand. I'm not trying to like start fights. If y'all like Ariel and other people, like it's okay. okay. I'm not trying to like, be like, this is what it is. I was just trying right. to use hence in a sentence. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> Um, but yeah, like I, my whole life have, have been placed in boxes. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, most of a good portion of my life, it was the, the black box. But then when I, and and then when I was, you know, went to Catholic high school, all these things struggling with my sexuality, 
pretty much a good portion of my life and then decided to finally come out, I was like, I want to be in that box because I, I went from like a, I went from like a um, self-hating phase to like, you know, oh yeah, no, I'm gay. Like I'm gay. <laughs> like, you know, and then it was like, okay, like dial it back now a little bit. Cause like you, <laughs> you a little bit, like you, you push it up on it. And so it's like, <laughs> it's finding that healthy balance. But, um, I'd say as far as like monoliths and like generalizations, um, my whole life, I've, always been told that I don't talk black mm-hmm. and like I don't uh, or or okay you, you pretty smart like for a black girl you know like or or like you know oh you you mix though so you got that like light skin privilege uh, like oh okay mm-hmm. <laughs> good, good to know that I have that <laughs> I, I was not aware like you know right. so so I I've gone through a lot of that and I'd say um the first thing that came to mind for me though was the more like you're pretty educated for a black girl oh yeah so where i'm like okay <laughs> so let's unpack that but i don't want to unpack that right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. keep that in your little bag you know, yeah <laughs> stuff that right down in your sack and keep it yeah. keep it there <laughs> yeah 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 uh, i'm poppy and i Grew up in Taiwan and then I came to the United States like eight years ago for college. I work. And you know, since I was oh my favorite word, I really can't think of one, but right now it it it's a word also a name. It's my fiance's name, Elon. <laughs> it is the most beautiful name I've oh. ever heard of. So oh. hence, it is, hence it is my favorite word. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I mean, yeah. well played. Well played. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is a really tough topic, in my opinion, because we have seen all kinds of monoliths around the world. Mm-hmm. And whenever we see it, we kind of you know reflect ourselves onto it because mm-hmm. it is so close to our lives, ourselves. So since I was young. You know, in Taiwan, all my classmates will give me all kinds of masculine nicknames mm-hmm. because I look like a dyke. I'm a, a lesbian tomboy, and I I was not okay with that. But I just you know laugh it off and think, okay, maybe it's a compliment because you know boys like to play with me. They don't think I'm a girlish girl. That that's maybe some kind of validation or something but then i still feel you know really uncomfortable because i love being a female i'm proud of being a female i think there are certain things that you know women can do mm-hmm. men cannot do <laughs> yeah. and then until i come to the united states people will you know see i'm an asian and they will ask me do you eat dog and then oh, i was like God. no no <laughs> I, I mean, there's only a small population of yeah. Chinese, Korean people eat dog, but not me. Yeah. And, and people will assume, oh, you must be smart. You are an Asian. Okay. I, I, I mean, I'm smart in different things, but maybe, you know, not that smart type. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, when, whenever we go, we receive a lot of messages and signals to remind us that we have to choose a box. We have to belong to something. Yeah. And, and yeah, when I told my best friend that I also dated men in the past, they were all surprised. They think I'm just a, you know, really, really dyke dyke that I only date women. But no, I, I, don't, I also died, dated men. Mm-hmm. And then I, it turned out that I, I realized I don't like men at all. So, <laughs> I mean... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, snap to that. I mean, I can do it. Yeah. I mean, I can do it. Yeah, but I mean, not I anymore. Good for you because, you because good for you because I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, snap to that. Uh, and then until now, I still don't know if I should introduce myself as a lesbian or a queer because. Although I can only love women, I also dated men in the past. So how should I call myself? So it's pretty- However the hell you want to call yourself. Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. Queer, whatever you want. Yeah. 
That really resonates, puppy, because like that's exactly like how I feel. Like no, no, like hatred or um, animosity towards people who identify as lesbian. It's just like I don't identify as that, and mm-hmm. it should always be about the person, right, and what feels yeah. most comfortable for them. And being like shoved into that box mm-hmm. made me feel like, oh, I have to, I have to own that yeah. identity, even though like it felt like not right and it felt uncomfortable. And I, mm-hmm. uh, when you're exploring your um, like gender sexuality and you're trying to figure out exactly how you identify and people mm-hmm. just keep sticking you into a place and you're like it doesn't yeah. feel right but everyone <laughs> says I am so I Why guess that's what I am <laughs> yeah. Yeah. they said I was lesbian so I guess that's what I am <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People are and constantly. it just stops you from really knowing exactly like who you really are and yeah. it just makes the, the like journey even harder because you're like so confused I spent so many years so confused I'm like I don't get it I keep telling people I'm this but it doesn't feel right to me so yeah yeah Yeah. and there there were times when I felt guilty to date you know men or you know people I have dated men I always feel ashamed and guilty but then I realized no I should not it's just me wanting to you know try things out and I think it is a healthy way to really understand myself and my preference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why should I you know, feel ashamed and yeah. guilty? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Or people yeah. are, people yeah. um, miss, or they, they put my fiance in that box all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, she identifies as bisexual. And so when they see us out, they're constantly like, oh, you lesbians, or oh, you know, you gays, or whatever. And you know, I've had to, I tell my friends all the time, like, actually, I know she's bisexual. And when we first started dating at first, I saw that like, she was quick to correct. But then, um, I thought too, in my head, if someone had labeled me and said like, Oh, you're bisexual. I'd be like, "Mm, no, no, I'm not Mm -hmm. like, no, I'm a lesbian. I'm queer. Like get it right. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, no, it's the same way. Like, you know, like, it's like, no, she says she's bisexual. So she's bisexual. Like, you know, there's no, yeah. no, you don't need to, you don't need to put her in any other box. Like, mm-hmm. it's not true. And I mean, do you ever, I know I feel that being a bisexual, being bisexual, um, I always find that there, you know, at least when I'm, when I'm, if I'm dating a woman or if I'm in, if I'm, if I'm around other, you know, other folks that are LGBTQ, they'll always say, oh, you're not really because you date guys, you know, kind of similar to what puppy has experienced, you know? And mm-hmm. so do you feel that there is a way within the LGBTQ community that we expect people to act, to act if you are a lesbian, if you are queer, if you are bi, if you are, you know, trans, that sort of way, that sort of way, like yeah. you, know, you must be in this square, in this box here. And if you deviate, then you're not really, you're not part of it. You're not one of us. Oh, absolutely. That was a huge thing when I was first coming out. Cause I was, um, like when I first came out, I came out as bisexual, which was like honest and true. Um, and then everyone placed me in, um, being a lesbian. But when people, when I would tell people that I was bisexual, they're like, yeah, you're halfway out of the closet. And I'm like, what is that? What does that even God. mean? <laughs> I'm like, what is that? <laughs> like, I mean, I feel like, I don't know if everyone's, but I feel like at, Every, if you're bisexual or you've claimed that at some time in your life, people have maybe told you like, oh, you're halfway out of the closet. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, I'm halfway. Cool. <laughs> Can't wait till I'm all the way out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't wait till I'm yeah. all the way out. <laughs> Working my way I out. actually was told, I was actually the opposite where I remember I was easing my way, which it's like, it. I was scared to, mm-hmm. to go all the way, whatever. Um, but I was scared to just say I'm gay or lesbian. And so for the like short amount of time when I came out, I remember telling one of my college roommates in a drive through at Wendy's, um, <laughs> somehow just like got the courage to say it between my order and hers, like before we get to that next window. And it was just like, yeah, I have the spicy chicken, home style grill, blah, blah, blah. And then like, we're about to drive up and I'm just like, I think I'm by. And she's like, and she's like, and, and to this day, I'm still wondering like, okay, it wasn't her place to say this, but at the same time, she was right. So she's like, oh no, honey, you're gay. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, 
I'm sorry, what? And she was just like, she's like, you're gay. But I'm so glad you told me. <laughs> so I remember I was just like, excuse me? Like, how dare her? Blah, blah, blah. And then like, I go home and I was like, she right though. Like, why could I say it? Like, why could I say I was gay? <laughs> you know? Oh my God. That's so cute. <laughs> Well, and I think that one of the things that um, y'all are pointing to is just the, um, like that it, the stereotypes that make it harder, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's just like, even inside of the, you know, LGBTQ community, where even when you're trying to come out in that way and like navigate that world, like it's already hard enough um, uh, just like saying who you are Mm -hmm. and that even inside of the community that is quote unquote supposed to your community you're like quote unquote supposed to accept you that it's like even in that it's still like oh well you know you're actually but you're actually but mm-hmm. you're actually this right yeah and like yeah. not having that room to to say exactly who you are and that it's really okay that uh that you sh- like that you can change and shift you know your sexuality is fluid Right. Mm-hmm. Like I've, I've gone all the way from like, you know, well, when I, this, that's a totally different story. But like when I was in college, <laughs> I would call myself straight ish. Like, oh, yes. like, ah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> before black, before blackish. I like <laughs> blackish. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah. It was straight ish. Yeah. <laughs> straight ish. I don't even know, whatever. Like that's what that's what I'm saying. That's a totally different story. But like going from there all the way to like, oh well, like, you know, I'm pansexual and like or this or whatever, like whatever that, you know, uh identity is that I that I'm claiming, but having it be okay that other people can accept you for whatever it is that you're like claiming right now and like hear you, like being the be the ability to be heard. And I think that with all of these stereotypes and like boxes that people put us in, like that's one of the dangers is like, there's no ability to be heard. Mm -hmm. There's no discussion around it. Like your friend at Wendy's was like, no, you're like, you know, (laughs) it just like shuts down um, conversation and like exploration and discovery and like, you know, all of that. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah. And I guess like my question, like leading into another question, which is like, like inside of being either a person of color or LGBTQ or both, like the combination of both of those things, you know, where do you see that that has like people putting you in those boxes has actually held you back in some way? (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, damn, let me look back on my journey. Right. It's it's like all of the stuff kind of crashes in and stuff like that. Yeah. I I had a, I had a person tell me one time um, that, you know, I think I was, we were talking about Black Lives Matter and why police brutality is, is an important issue. And, you know, this is, a, this is a white person. And they said, but you make $200,000 a year. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't impact you, does it? And it's just kind of like, <laughs> I was like, quick, you know, like his brain just kind of, brain kind of locked up because it's like, what, what is, A, what does money have to do with it? B, does that mean that I've still never experienced racism or sexism or homophobia or whatever, you know, and three, like, do you think that money cures it all? Like, you know, yeah. does, does Oprah never, never experienced racism or sexism, you know, that sort of thing. And what, what it, what it kind of showed me was like, okay, it's almost like, you know, discrimination and, um, and, and not, and not being allowed to be yourself like have some sort of expiration date. Once you reach a level of success, you're supposed to not have to have to deal with those things anymore. Um, and it's, it's very strange to kind of hold that line, you know, to say, you know, yeah, I have a lot of privilege. I have a lot of, um, I have a lot of good things going on in my life, but that doesn't mean a, that I don't work for other people's liberation and B that doesn't mean that I'm not going to still be experienced that at some point, you know, mm-hmm. um, do you ever feel that people are like, oh, well, you're in a relatively good position. You know, why do you care about these things? Why do you want to talk about these things? You know, does that ever come across your particular, you know, your particular corner of the world? I mean, I just get it more. I get it more, not even about what my profession is. It's just more like 
why do you care? You're light skinned. I get more of that. Like, I get more of that. Like you're not fully black, so you're okay. Like you're not going to, you're not going to experience what we experience, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but yeah, I don't think I've ever really had, um, like my professional uh, background be like, Oh, well you make more, although that's definitely, I, that's definitely a thing. And I know what, uh, I've heard some of my successful, even one of my successful people that I know is, you know, a PhD doctor making Mm -hmm. lots of money. Uh, and, but walking down the street, it doesn't matter. Yeah. One thing, the skin color. Mm -hmm. And so, and Michael Strahan, the, um, you know, former football player. And I was on good morning America a couple weeks ago. I had seen a story where he was saying he was pulled over and racial racially profiled and then they got up to the window and the cop recognized him and then said had his hand on his weapon and then said oh oh sorry like my bad you i'm a huge fan like you know blah 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 and michael was like uh no you just profiled me like all you saw was a black man driving a car like can we talk about that like you know yeah but no i don't think money Mm -hmm. fixes it like you said yeah, yeah. Or lets you escape. Right. But also, I think it erases the fact that, like, it's not like you were born and you just had, like, $200,000. <laughs> like, right, right. you worked for it and it, like, erases, like, your hard work and the way that you, like, build the life that you have. And it's like, it's like, oh, I was just, like, born with this, like, well, wow. like, no, I worked my ass off for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, and the same thing for relationships, you know, like, oh, you're in a good relationship. Why would you think that it's so hard to meet somebody? Or, you know, hey, you're, you know, you, uh, you know, you seem to be secure in your identity. You know, why do you, why are you so worried about other people? Why are you so worried about other people dealing with this sort of thing? And, and that's one of the things why I, I wanted to do this with Elizabeth, because Elizabeth has a platform, you know. She doesn't, if she, if she wanted to, she could be like, this ain't my thing. I'm just going to talk about like, you know, lavender and all kinds of cool stuff, right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I do love lavender. I do love lavender. Lavender. Yeah, lavender. lavender. Pumpkin That's spice lattes and lavender. Beautiful lavender. Lavender. <laughs> right. So, get me some Uggs and some pumpkin spice latte. I'm good. You know? And some lavender, so, y'all. Right. But because, you know, but because she cares about these sorts of things, you know, she's extending this platform. And so, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, I think that, that folks don't even really think about when they, when they make these generalizations, it's like, you know, we can, we, we can walk and shoot gum at the same time. You know, we can, we can be successful and, or, or be in a good position in our individual lives and still give a damn about other people in their lives and want to, and want to, you know, elevate them and make sure they have platforms to be able to be heard and to be safe in their identities. And that's one of the things that I think that, being in that monolith, being in that late in that label, uh, in that label space, kind of takes from us a bit. A bit. Let's see. One uh, thing that I would love to ask you guys is, um, what is a weird thing about you individually that people are like, but you're black or you're gay or you're? But but I'll I'll give you one at work. Um, I I love Jeff Buckley you know, the, the, the singer from the nineties, right. I have him. Um, so lover, you should have come over. I have the, the chorus to that as my ringtone, you know, oh, lover, right. <laughs> and, <laughs> come over. All right. I can sing it, but you know, <laughs> so I'll wait for the concert. So I'm at work and I'm in a, I'm in a one-on-one meeting and I forget to mute my phone and you know, somebody calls me and of course he's singing, oh, you know, and all <laughs> And and the the Latina girl in front of me, she says, "Oh, I never that's Jeff Buckley. I never thought you would listen to Jeff Buckley." And I'm just like, <laughs> "And you was real heavy." So <laughs> you know, I'm kind of like, "What what does the you mean?" And she's like, "Oh, well, you know, um, you know," and, and she starts backpedaling. But I'm like, "But literally, it could be because black because we female. Well, it could be because female because lots of girls like Jeff Buckley." And I'm up here doing all this math. I'm like having all the you know hypothesis and all that stuff floating around me because I'm like, which, "Which one? Which one?" You know. And while she's dancing, it's just kind of like I can't even have a conversation with you anymore because I already know what you think of whatever the you is, whatever the me is here. You know. Do you have that? Do you have those types of experiences? And what is the you that they that they they usually kind of 
index on if somebody ever ever does that to you first thing comes to mind for me was also music is i for years (laughs) struggled with owning the fact that i like country music i would like i would Mm. like tiptoe around the fact and i'd be like oh i like i like country pop like, I don't like country music, but I like country pop. So, like, if it's, like, on the pop music stations, like, I can get down with some Dan and Shay or, like, like you know, like, I'm like, oh, well, you know, and then they'd be like, okay, but, and I'm like, no, that's too country. And then, so, like, over years, over the years, and let's be real, I mean, there are some still some country songs out there where I'll just flat out be like, next. <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> but for the most part, I struggled with, like, legit, being like a closeted country fan and so, yes. <laughs> and so um a couple of times at work like i will sometimes get i i have all types of i'm very eclectic like i mean yeah. i literally could be listening to tupac and then the next song could be johnny cash yep. so like it's very across the board but yeah. my headphones i had like closed my laptop and sometimes the music will play out loud yeah. if i like disconnect my headphones so i did that at work one time same thing and then i was like oh Oh, but you listen to that country? Like, right. you know? And I was just like, so what were you expecting? Like, did you think I was going to just be like blasting NWA? Or, right. and, she, and she's just like, oh, no, no, that's not what I meant. I just, I was like, so then what did you mean? And she's just like, well, you know, I just wasn't sure if like, you know, I, I, um, and then just couldn't even come up with it. Right. Like, like a thing. And I was like, great, now I've made you uncomfortable. And now right. I'm the dick that's um, called you out. Yeah. So yeah, that and then um, also yeah. this one a little bit more hurtful, but like college degree. I have a college yeah. degree, mm-hmm. and so like sometimes you know I'd be like, oh, I got my degree in hospitality, and be like, oh, oh, you have a degree. Like, <laughs> sure do. <laughs> yeah. Sure do. It's on, it, people. Yeah. it's on paper and everything. Didn't come from my didn't come from my printer either. <laughs> like, yeah. sure do. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I think in Asian culture, there are similar things like, you know, when you don't go to a, a grad school right after undergrad, people will think, oh, you're, you're not, you know, pursuing your future. Mm-hmm. And then it, it's an Asian thing, like most Asian parents want their kids, you know, to get master's degree or even PhD before they have you know, work experience. But then it's, it's really frustrating because I, I want to work instead of keep studying for something I, I'm not sure if I would like mm-hmm. for, you know, for a long, long period of time and waste all that money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Something on the other side of like education is <clears throat> people assume, because I'm Asian and Filipino, um and then making like generalizations <laughs> they just like see an asian and they're like and i filipinos don't use chopsticks that's just like not a thing that's in filipino culture um but because i made i think I'll, everyone just assumes like oh asians use chopsticks and i'm not good with chopsticks i'm terrible <laughs> at it and like people will see and they're like oh my god why can't like you're asian why can't you use chopsticks? Oh my god. <laughs> i'm like i'm filipino don't chopsticks. <laughs> and like people will always they make I've had friends that have like made me feel really like shameful because I don't know like how to like use chop I'm like not skilled at using chopsticks. And they're like, what is wrong with you? You're Asian. I'm like, not that kind of Asian, a different kind. <laughs> It's it's wild that that happens. Like yes, and it's like, why do I have to feel guilty about something that's not in my culture? <laughs> like, why do I? Why are you yelling at me? <laughs> yeah. Like, why is I this happening? I did it once, and this like my friend, like her, um, like partner was just shaming me, and I was like, I was like, do you know anything about Asia? <laughs> <laughs> We're not all the same. That's like with the with Jamie. I think I've talked to Jamie about this about the uh, watermelon. Yeah, I don't. I can't stand watermelon. Like I don't like it. I don't like the flavor. I don't like melon. I don't like cantaloupe. I don't like anything that's cucumber. Anything that has like a weird aftertaste. Mm -hmm. So I don't really mess with watermelon. And like you know, every time you go, oh, 
you yes. don't like watermelon. I'm like, <laughs> no, I don't like watermelon. And so right. they were like the chopsticks where you're just like, why are we making this a conversation? Yeah. Like, yeah. why is this you, a thing? <laughs> like, I don't have watermelon on my plate. You do. Yeah. Like, do you eat the watermelon? You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. why is this a thing? Kool Aid, fried chicken, all of that stereotypes, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, can yeah. I, can I say one story about watermelon? Yeah. I used to work at uh, this like barbecue restaurant called Lucille's. Mm-hmm. I don't know if anyone's heard of it. Um, and I remember like a group of, it was a bunch of white people and there was one black guy and the white people, apparently this is a thing they do to him. This poor guy, they will order watermelon and they will specifically make the waiter, like give it to the black guy. And I was, and they laughed at, they were all laughing. And I was like, this is terrible. <laughs> You're like what the hell? Yeah. 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 Exactly. No, it it's such a thing. Yeah. That was <laughs> like, oh, uh, my brain just broke. Like, are you in no, danger? Sure. Uh, what? Yeah, and I, I don't know. I, I mean, he must have felt uncomfortable. Like, but he was laughing. You know, I'm sure. Like, this was back in like, like 2000. Mm-hmm. Eight, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. A, di- a different time. <laughs> this, was, this was back when you know, like two thousand eight, two thousand eight, you know, right? Like well, still around, the but they weren't. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> white supremacists were still around, but they just weren't in office. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. They were, they were lurking. They just weren't like out in the open yeah. about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I've been force fed watermelon before, like with or not like for, but like just pushed on so right. much to the point where my one of my my ex's mother was so incredibly inappropriate and racist and would just be little tiny little things and we're not talking like i want you dead racist or like right right but but just very like ignorant like wow you are just like blowing my mind little things and every time i'd be over there it'd be a big ass watermelon in the sink and she'd be like i have some watermelon for you and I'd be like, this is the fourth time I've told you that I don't like watermelon. <laughs> and, yeah. she, and then like, she'd be like, oh, well, okay, well, can I get you any, like a snack? That, like, what, what will you eat then? Oh my God. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's no. like. <laughs> yeah, I'm confused here. So what, I need to be educated on this. Why? why oh. <laughs> Jamie, Jamie could probably, I feel like she's very intellectual and she would, it would behoove you to listen to her to, to talk about this. Oh, um, <laughs> it would behoove you to listen to Jamie. Hey, right. Jamie. Here is Jamie. <laughs> so, um, so uh, shortly after um, after the Civil War and Reconstruction, you know, of course, the enslaved folks were freed. You know, um, black folks were freed, and so, um, but there is still kind of these. Um, it, 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 it was overt, but it wasn't governmental or legal, you know, ways of intimidating black people, right? Mm-hmm. And so, one of these ways were, were you know, were so-called minstrel shows and you know, um, and so-called um, variety shows that depicted black people in one in one particular way or not. And so, one of those things that, that was that was done. This is one of the reasons why blackface is such an issue, right? What it was usually white people who would paint, paint themselves black, you know, and then, you know, depict black people as like lazy or, you know, um, or shiftless or, you know, just not, mm-hmm. just not, not productive, you know, and as a result, you know, this would, this, this served to, you know, to show, to make white people think that they were, that black people were lazy, wouldn't hire them, you know, or, um, you know, mm-hmm. would think that they were, you know, were, you know, uh, were you know, prone to kind of you know shirk off their work you know that sort of thing, and one of the one of the caricatures that came out from it was called the Pickaninny, which is a little black child with usually like um, the 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 barrettes and very very matted hair. Um, I don't know if any of you guys are watching the show Love Lovecraft Country right now, but there is um, an episode where they have like these it's like a horror version of like American Gothic African American style. It's the best show on television right now, but. Um, one they had in, in one of their episodes, they had these piccaninnies and they had like all the you know sharp teeth and all sorts of things. It was very hard, hard show, but that's what that's what I'm talking about. And they would always depict these piccaninnies as being on the porch, lounging around, eating watermelon and fried chicken because apparently that's what black people do. And so 
it has been such a per, been such a pervasive and enduring, you know, stereotype that you know, and I mean, throughout the years, if somebody wants to wants to intimate a black person, they try and force watermelon on them, or you know, they show them, you know, shove some fried chicken in front of them, or they hang they hang nooses and those types of things. So it's not that it's it's it, it's, it's not offensive on its face because plenty of black people like watermelon. I love watermelon. You know, I'll, I'll tear up some fried chicken in front of you, you know, and not, and, and, and not care. But the thing about it is that it always makes it, it, I think it makes black people feel self-conscious, especially eating it in front of white people, because that's just fulfilling the stereotype, you know, mm-hmm. that sort of thing. It's, it's kind of, you know, and so, and so when you say, when, when people say eating watermelon and, and fried chicken, my parents and my sister will not eat it in front of white people. They just won't do it, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's just one of those things where it's like, you have to think about that before you go eat some delicious fried chicken or some delicious watermelon mm-hmm. or something like that. You have to kind of like, oh man, are they going to think that I'm like one of those pickaninnies back in the day because I'm eating this? And, yeah. you know, it's, it's kind of a, it's, it's kind of a, a, a bummer, you know? You can't even mm-hmm. have a good time because you're thinking about this. And so that's why I'm yeah. so horrified at the story because I'm like, <laughs> okay, I have a lot of white friends, but I don't have any white friends that would do that to me. And if they did, we wouldn't mm-hmm. be friends. <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, you know, I'm wondering, okay, what is it about him? And that might be me putting him in in this in, in, in my own box because I, I don't get it. Sure. And you I think- know, right. But I'm like, sure. and I'm sure he, he pro- I don't want to speak for him either because right. I literally don't know him. Right. But I bet he's not friends with those people now. Right. He's right. like, it's 2020. I look back. No. <laughs> no, like what the hell? Like, that? Let that <laughs> yeah, exactly. And yeah. so well said. So well said, Jamie. That's why I'm glad that I it did behoove all of us for you to, to yeah. say it just that was like more that. than a murmur. <laughs> 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 and like and like um that was so well said, but also it reminds me of back in the day when like I had certain friends that and when I say friends, I'm using the term loosely. I have an amazing support uh, support system now and like actual friends who are like right, my right. foundation, right? But then you yeah. use the term friend. Um, yeah. So I had some friends back in the day that would like, you know, like, how come everything has to be about race? And like, but it's like in that situation right there, if people don't know the origin and root of that story, right, right. it's like you literally just going out to eat chicken, yeah. but you're like, but... It is. It has to be about race. Yeah. Like literally, yeah. I can't eat this chicken in front of you without me stressing out, thinking that I'm per- perpetuating the stereotype. Right, right. Yeah. So it really just comes down to it's literally as simple as fried chicken and watermelon. Right. And like, see, and like, oh, and yeah. puppy, puppy was like, I'm not sure. And like, I'm glad you asked, but it's like, yeah. a lot of people don't know that. Yeah. And I remember, like you said, the origins of blackface. I remember yeah. I had to explain mm-hmm. blackface to my mother in law and like truly in detail. Yeah, and truly saying like, actually, it's not just that, right? It's, it's this, and yeah. like, oh, oh, yeah, okay, like yeah. you know, not just yeah. in your face, you like know. it's it resonates, it, it resonates with something, right? right. That's, and that's the that's the 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 craziness about being in twenty twenty, you know, and and being so far away from it, you know, you want to say you've gotten past it, but then there's still people that do it, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> every time, <laughs> hey, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know i mean there's still people that are doing yellow face like it's just kind of like mm-hmm. what you know like this is, you know when 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 what's his name because i will not say his name on this podcast and so he is, mm-hmm. you know says the china virus it's like you know are you serious right now you know it, it you know it is a virus that happened to strike all these different places nobody called swine flu the american virus because it showed mm-hmm. it originate here you know so it's one of those things where it's kind of like, you know, there is a context to this. It's not just the word. It's not just the action. It's not just that person. There is context. And Tom Mahaffey Coates says, you know, words mean nothing without context. And so that's what, you know, that's what we, that's what I feel like we're always talking about here, especially throughout this entire season. It's all about context. Totally. I thought I asked the question because it, it really explains, you know, how monolith mm-hmm. come to shape. It's yeah. like constant, you know, formation mm-hmm. of media or stuff. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. yeah. 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 And, and, and ingrained in you, just like mm-hmm. ingrained in you, like for 
your birth since your birth uh to mm-hmm. the point where people can't get past it they see um uh, people who are black and they you tell them you don't like watermelon they're like what <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, like, that's, that's like, i i have seen black people and they all eat watermelon exactly so. right it's like so <laughs> what, what what are you trying to pull? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Trying to say, I or don't like, like i, like, I go to an same. asian restaurant and i ask for a yeah. fork and they're like what exactly <laughs> I was like, please give me a fork. <laughs> I don't want to eat this with just my hand. <laughs> I like, I can't use these chopsticks. <laughs> I need a fork. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. You know, yeah. it's, it's wild, you know. So. And I do think monoliths just, I think they, they're dangerous and that they, for me at least, they've just caused me to like, um like doubt who i am <laughs> i just uh-huh. think it's, yeah. it uh holds us back from our own in you know uh individual growth and exploration because we we just get bogged down by other people's perception of us yeah. and it stops us from like figuring out like it, who we are on our own terms mm-hmm. absolutely absolutely you know i know we've got five minutes left um for now but um, I would love to ask you all. Um, I was having a I was having a um, a conversation with one of my husbands. They're married to each other. They're not married to me, but I call them my husband. Um, and we were talking about you know about labels, right? You know, um, and one of them, Michael, he's my heart. He's like, I'm I'm the MVP, most valuable position. There's no such thing as a label here. I I do what I want, who I want, when I want. You know, so I'm not going to call myself gay or bisexual or anything. I'm just Michael and I date who I want. Do you think that there is, I, I know that we've had, you know, we've had labels because it helps to kind of create our identity. Do you feel like it's, 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 um, it's, it's passe or do you still feel like it's useful at this point? I mean, I feel like it's, it's, yeah, I feel like it's, I feel like it's useful mm-hmm. in situations, but I also feel like, yeah, like I wish that I could be as confident as Michael and just be like, yeah. I'm a human being. Right. I, I, I date what I want, who I want, blah blah blah. Right, right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Good on, good on him. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I'm trying yeah. to get there. I'm trying. I'm not there yet. I'm not right. trying to get there. But I yeah. feel like I feel like so much of who I am was I going to a Catholic high school and just and in general and like was so like every day just like it's a sin. It's a, it's not. It you know it's not. And so when you finally identify and own it. Mm-hmm. it's like you want to like you, you grab that label and you're just like oh no I want to be proud of mm-hmm. I'm black and I'm proud that kind of right. like you know but yeah I mean if it I feel like if it wasn't a big deal and people didn't get so offended yeah. <laughs> then we probably wouldn't really need to hold on to our label but right. for me I feel like I kind of need the label to to pride myself on how proud I am <laughs> as a as a black queer woman yeah makes sense yeah, I feel that too. I like, uh, um, like I own my queerness and I stand tall in that. And I, I feel like, yeah, I need that too. Cause you talk about like, how do we like give people like the flavor of queer that we are and right, I'm, like, right. I'm telling them exactly who the hell I am. I'm queer. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Please do not call me a lesbian. Not that I don't like lesbians. I love them. That's yeah. just not me. Right, <laughs> you know? right. Yeah. So awesome. I think we still like need labels to yeah. help not to distinguish us from others, but to educate others about, you know, there are many, many more diverse groups and many more opportunities. And yeah, you can be anything you want. So we need yeah. those labels to show them. But yeah. we are all, you know, everyone is so open minded and we can all be who we want to be. Then that day, we don't need labels anymore. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. totally. Yeah, I love it. I love it. That was, that's kind of what I was feeling too. I'm not quite where he is yet either, you know. Yeah. But, um, but I, I would love to get to that point. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'd love to get there too. And I think it's not just us as like queer people doing the work, right? It's other people too. Yeah, we got to have everybody doing the work. Everybody, girl. Everybody. Mm-hmm. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And on on that note, like, what do you see it is needed like if if you were to if you were to be asked the question you know what do you need? like mm-hmm. even like on an individual level like what do you need 
from from other people to be open minded yeah um, and to and be to listen yeah listen yeah be yeah. flexible ask mm-hmm. questions like puppy did yeah. you know yeah exactly exactly yeah yeah so. exactly puppy could have easily been like not said anything and yeah. then googled and then gone down some weird rabbit hole and then right. been like and then been like oh oh well yeah. i don't really know but yeah. and then like just and then it just keeps going and yeah. it goes to the next person and it goes to the next person and before you know it everyone's out here still forcing watermelon on, on people yeah. <laughs> and you're just like i'm <laughs> stuck it won't stop <laughs> yes. yeah. educate have open dialogues have be able to listen and also be able to like just have the open dialogue and know that you're probably going to make a mistake. I'm, yeah. I'm going to make a mistake. We can both talk about it. Like, you know, mm-hmm. that kind of, um, but not, not defensive. Yeah. Like, you yeah. know, not that like, it's like, just, just talk it out. And if we, yeah. until we get across the root of the problem we had, I will say real quick, we had for work, Trevor Noah actually um, was part of our diversity summit. And so he spoke and it was amazing, but he had this little section where he was talking about how, if you go to a, he said that the difference between South Africa and America is that in South Africa, they're just blatant about it. Like they're racist. And they're just like, Mm -hmm. you aren't going to get this house because you're black. And people are like, Oh, well, thank you for letting me know. on my way." You know, as opposed to like in America where it's like, if you work hard, you can, you know, you can get this house, you can do whatever you want. But like in, in a sense, in a sense of things, it's not the case. And so he was saying like, when we go to doctors, if you find out you have lung cancer, the doctor's not like, you're an idiot. You were smoking cigarettes. You have lung cancer. Bye-bye. It's mm-hmm. like, no, the doctor's literally just like, you have lung cancer. Here are the things that you need. We're going to mm-hmm. try to treat it this way and we're going to try to fix it. And that's how I'm going to help you. Yeah. And they just mm-hmm. go down to the root of the problem. They don't like, you know, make shame people in for certain things. Like they truly get to the root and they ask and they say like, this is how we're going to fix it. And I think until we can have those discussions and truly just talk about it and Mm -hmm. educate people the way that you just did with that beautiful, whatever it was that you did. (laughs) I was was like, Oh my God, it was so like well-spoken. I was just like, yes. Um, I don't, I don't think we're going to move that needle much until people can actually open up their ears, like their ears and actually listen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I totally agree. We, we really need people to be open-minded, willing to learn and ask questions. But for those who don't have, you know, open-minded, just shut up. Yes, and that too. We all be yeah, like, yeah. Don't spend your time yeah. on them. Like, yeah. they're I, always gonna I mean, not everyone can. Part. Yeah, not everyone has the ability to learn to be open minded. And for those, yeah, yes. yeah mm-hmm. be quiet. That's, that's, yeah. real. that's real. Well, you yeah. just shut up, man. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful quote. Yeah. Beautiful. yeah. That's, that's beautiful. And thank you. Thank you so much. And yeah, Jamie, thank you for um, answering that puppy. First of all, thank you for asking that question. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, Jamie, thank you for answering that question. I'm just going to speak to that for a second because I learned a lot in, in you sharing that I was like, Oh shit. Like I didn't even actually know that. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, and like, I knew that it, you know, I was like, okay, stereotype stereotypes originate from somewhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I did not. And the other thing is that I didn't know uh, the term um, pick and any yeah. um, came from that. Yeah. Like, I didn't actually know this is something like on my journey of like learning about race and like where mm-hmm. I have, you know, um, where I have like ingrained racism in myself. Mm-hmm. And I don't even know yeah. um, is like in terms like that. Like, I really, you know, I, I'm Midwest and like my mom's family is from the South. And, stuff like that. And so the term piccaninny really does mean like someone who's like lazy and stupid. Like that's mm-hmm. how people use it. Mm-hmm. And I had no idea that it was like racially charged. Yeah. Right? It's like if you, if you call somebody, some, some black kid a piccaninny, you're going to have problems with their, with their parents. So, <laughs> yeah. And I, you're going to catch you, those I, hands. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right and like, and I I honestly didn't know that I did not know that that term was racially charged at mm-hmm. all 
And I think that just goes back to the question of like, inside of listening, Mm -hmm. um, listening and like, and, and in asking a question, not being defensive about the question that you ask, Mm -hmm. right? Like if you ask a question and it answers you, Mm -hmm. don't argue with their answer. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big, like, that's one of my takeaways from your, from all of your shares today. Mm -hmm. It's like, if you ask someone a question about their identity, about, you know, something about them, about, you know, whatever, like, you know, D with the fork, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, but honestly, like, and especially like if, if someone had asked that question, they're like, oh, well, you know, I, I've used the term pick ninny before, but I didn't mean it. It's like, okay, don't be defensive about it. Yeah. Just, yeah. Stop, just apologize. Now you know. Yeah, now yeah. you know. Yeah. Apologize. Stop using the term. It's like, okay, mm-hmm. like I'm getting from the set. I'm never going to use that term ever again. I'm like, <laughs> like I did not know yeah. that. And then if you use the term, and then if you continue to use the term out after you know, it's like mm-hmm. you yeah, it's like, that's messed up. Like, yeah, you now exactly. know. Mm-hmm. Right, right, exactly, exactly. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you all so much. I, uh, you know, puppy. The Bra, Jamie, thank you so much for being yeah, here. I'm like damn, Jamie's the only one. Jamie's the only one that got the heart, though. Oh. <laughs> I see. I was like, oh, okay. it's gonna be hard. Make a mistake, okay? Like, <laughs> I mean, so honest like that, like Jamie. <laughs> oh, I meant that for everybody. <laughs> I'm sharing the heart. Everybody gets the heart again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, did I teach y'all the, the love dripping from the walls motion? Did I teach it to all of you? I think you uh-huh. did. Okay, I will say V knows it. Okay, yeah. so you do heart, right. so love, mm-hmm. and then you swoosh it out, and then you drip it down the Ooh, yeah. like, like spirit wow. fingers. Wow. Like spirit, spirit, <laughs> spirit fingers. <laughs> These aren't spirit fingers. <laughs> These are spirit fingers. <laughs> But seriously, thank you all. Yes, yes. But seriously, thank you all so much for for uh, this chat today. I appreciate all of you, and thank you for sharing and thank you for all of the truth. Like, just thank you for showing up and being your authentic self, and really just saying like how how things are for you. Um, and I really, really appreciate that. Um, anything that anybody else wants? Any closing statements? Closing statements from anybody? I just want to thank all of the three of you for being with us on this journey. This is a great conversation and I would love, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to know the three, the three of you and you too, Elizabeth, you're okay. But I'm just happy to know you stellar human beings. So thank you so much for your time and your effort and your work. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for yeah. just, yeah. <laughs> for like let it, let it be yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for creating thank you space for and, educating yeah. me yeah and thank you all for sharing you know that, that valuable information and all that yeah